It's, it's not even that early, it's 7am, but the clocks haven't gone back yet, so it's really dark. <laughs> it is pre-dawn. I got nervous yesterday because we were reading the navigation notes for today's cruise. And it's, In a 10-year-old Nicholson's guy. What, more than 10-year-old Nicholson's guy? And it said... Um, that a decade ago. <laughs> that you shouldn't travel these locks in the school holidays. Yeah, the Ashton flight. Well, so, our flights. There's three flights in Ashton that a decade ago had a bad reputation and may have a bad reputation these days. Yeah, so it says don't do it in half term. And what is it this week? Half term. Half term. <laughs> what did it say? Don't do it in school holidays. And it also said to do it early. So I'm like, Michael, we're getting up at 5 a.m. It's not late at 5 a.m. No. <laughs> But realistically, we do have 26 18 months. plus... Nine. Nine? Eight. Oh yeah, because we've already done one. Yes, we have 26 locks to go. Which we've done more than 26 in a day before, I'm sure. Yes, oh, yeah. it's too early for math. 26 <laughs> locks, no bicycle. <clears throat> 26 locks, we've done more than that in a day, but not enjoyably. And not in the dark, and not in a dodgy area in school holidays. <laughs> True that. <laughs> Luckily, the dark will finish fairly soon. And then the rain will start. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to that part. Um, and the towpath's closed. I keep looking back. The towpath's actually closed just there, so I'm not sure how I'm even going to get to the first lot. Well, I can take you to it. Just but then I don't actually see where the lock is either. It's right there. It's right there? Yeah, okay. it's literally there through the bridge. Well, let's, we'll go forward. I think you out. have to drop me before the bridge. We'll, we'll go forward and we'll find out. <laughs> so with any luck, we actually make it through the flights today. And we're up above lock 18 on the Ashton. Before it gets dark tonight. Before it gets dark tonight. It's going to be a long day. Yeah. And this, is, dark this is day two of our 108 lock odyssey. So we only did one yesterday. So we, so we got to do this 26 lock. <laughs> we do 26 a day. We'll be back ahead of schedule. Mm. <laughs> At least on the schedule. Let's go. That way. This is the fence that's blocking the towpath, which is why I had to be on the boat for the first few hundred metres of today's cruise. Michael drops George and I off on the other side and we go and get the first lock ready. We're on the Rochdale Canal, and the nine locks between the Castlefield Basin and the junction with the Ashton Canal have quite the reputation for being difficult. There are no bywashes next to these locks, so any excess water from the pounds goes straight over the lock gates, which means emptying the locks takes much longer than it would if there was a different escape route for the water. As you can see, we're in the Deansgate area of central Manchester. You can see what I mean about the canal flooding over the top of the lock gates. There's no shortage of water here. It may be early in the morning, but Manchester's commuters are streaming into the city for their day at work. The towpath is still closed here and it's quite a mission to get through the scaffolding to get back on the boat with George. Off the boat once more to get Tib Lock ready. Above this lock is the junction with the Old Manchester and Salford Junction Canal, which ran for one kilometre down to the River Irwell navigation. The short canal was built because about 30,000 tonnes of good a year were being transferred between the two waterways by cart, which was neither efficient or practical. So there is at least one by wash along here. Time for breakfast. We pull over above Oxford Road Lock and Michael pops over to the Vietnamese street food place to get banh mi. Yep, 
So if you want some fun me, come to Vietnamese street food. And now back to the bridge and cow and walk. Bridge always waiting. Here the canal passes alongside the famous Canal Street and the centre of Manchester's gay village. Sadly, the party atmosphere is somewhat lacking on a damp October morning. At this point, a familiar face from Twitter turns up to help us through the rest of the flight. And as there's no towpath access to the next lock, we all jump onto the boat. You can see the glass and steel structure above the walls around this lock. Apparently this is to stop drinkers falling down from the street above, but it also means that we all have to ride to the next lock, even though it's a few hundred feet away. Buildings have been constructed above Piccadilly Lock, so there's rather a strange atmosphere down here. When we leave, we cruise between the building's support pillars. It does feel bizarre. Still in a tunnel underneath the building, Michael waits for us to prepare the last lock on the Rochdale 9 flight. These locks have been hard work, but we've still got a lot more to do today. The Rochdale Canal was closed in 1952 after falling into disrepair some years earlier, but this section between the Ashton Canal and Castlefield Basin remained open as it was part of the Cheshire Cruising Ring. Since then the main line of the Rochdale Canal has been restored and continues ahead to eventually meet the Calder and Hebble navigation in Sowerby Bridge. We're turning off the Rochdale Canal here and onto the Ashton Canal. The Ashton Canal runs for almost 7 miles and has 18 locks. It was opened in the late 1700s after coal mine owners in the areas around Ashton and Lyme and Oldham saw the benefits that the Bridgewater Canal had brought in transporting coal to Manchester. There has clearly been a lot of redevelopment at this end of the Ashton Canal. There are lots of canal side properties in Piccadilly Village and plenty of secure visitor mooring opportunities here too. Lock one on the Ashton Canal and we get the first hint of just how problematic these locks are going to be. Only the paddle on the left is working and so the lock is really slow to fill. Plus, double lock gates mean extra work for the crew. Mike leaves us here as he has to head to work. It was such a big help having him join us for those locks. Between locks one and two is the entrance to the old Islington Arm. It was less than a mile long, but was heavily used with coal, sand, salt and cotton wharfs, a scrap iron wharf and various works along its banks. A somewhat unusual development along here, this is the Chips Building, part of the regeneration of the Ancoats area, which is now known as New Islington. There's a curious mix of old and new around here. It's a mile or so to the next lock, and we set off with Michael walking with George and me driving the boat.
This area clearly hasn't benefited from redevelopment yet. We don't feel particularly unsafe here, but it's clearly a little sketchy. Then, under the next bridge, we pass a group of people who are injecting drugs out in the open on the towpath. One guy has his trousers down, presumably he's using a vein in his leg. It's a pretty depressing sight, and while it's a little shocking for us to see, we wouldn't want to put anyone off coming along here. There are lots of former mill buildings along here. At one time, the canal was lined on both sides with mills, but many of the buildings have been demolished. The main issue on this stretch of canal is how shallow the water is. I'm crawling along, barely moving. It's pretty uncomfortable cruising. Into Beswick Bottom Lock, and I'm a little confused as to why the last pound was so shallow, as there's an abundance of water coming down the bywash. I guess it just really needs dredging. Lock 4 only has a rise of 3.5 feet now. Apparently the levels were altered at some point due to the subsidence from the coal fields. Apprehension for cruising the Ashton Canal was pretty unnecessary. There's lots of friendly people about wanting to chat. At first I thought these bricks were just missing from the side of the lock, but these holes actually form the lock ladder. I'm quite glad we don't have to use them. A few days ago on the Bridgewater Canal, we passed Manchester United Stadium, and in the background here, you can just about see Manchester City Stadium. This is the first lock in the Claydon flight. Leaky lock gates and broken paddles mean slow progress up here. Apparently, this is the deepest narrow lock in Britain at 13 feet 10 inches. That bridge we are passing is at the old junction with the now disused Stockport Branch Canal.
yet another lock where only one paddle is working, so it takes an age for the water to equalise. Not great as the boat waiting to come down as well. There used to be a swing bridge across this lock, but it was removed at some point. Locks 17 and 18 were both double locks at one point. The offside locks have long been out of action, which kind of makes sense going on the level of traffic we've seen today. We're at the top of the flight and we feel a little triumphant. A local primary school is just finished for the day, so there's lots of families stopping to watch. There's also an elf stand here, so while Michael chats away, I take the opportunity to dash off and empty our liquid tanks. At the top of the flight is the junction with the Hollinwood branch of the Ashton Canal. It once went all the way to Oldham. A small section has been restored and it leads a short distance to a marina. We take the right hand fork and continue along the main line of the Ashton Canal. We had said we were going to stop above Lock 18, but somewhere along the line we made the questionable decision to carry on to the beginning of the Huddersfield Narrow Canal. It's another three or so miles. It's been a long day and George is a little fed up, but some cake helps the situation. Approaching this bridge we wonder if we're going to fit underneath, it looks so low. And it's a pretty tight fit. This is the Ashton Packet Boat Company's boatyard. This is where boats were once loaded with coal from Ashton Moss Colliery, which, when it opened in 1882, was the deepest pit in the world. There are lots more old mill buildings along this section of the canal. This is Portland Basin and the junction with the Peak Forest Canal. We'll be back to cruise it at some point, but there's quite a few scheduled winter closures down that way, so it doesn't make sense for us to do it now.
through the Asda Tunnel, presumably named for the supermarket above it. We've now reached Whitelands Basin, which is the eastern terminus of the Ashton Canal. That bridge marks the start of the Huddersfield Narrow Canal. This is the hardest lock of the whole day. The paddle seemed to be seized closed, and it takes all my strength to turn the windlass inch by inch. It doesn't help that it's late in the afternoon, and we're 26 locks in at this stage. I finally get the gates open, and Michael brings the boat in. As the boat rises up, he takes the opportunity to clear the prop. They weren't kidding about this being the Huddersfield Narrow Canal. It's a good job there's no traffic coming the other way. George is desperate to get off the boat here. The towpath's tantalisingly close. Yet another old mill building, Wellington Mill. We're really ready to stop now. It's getting late and it's going to be dark soon. Even George has had enough. Finally, some visit moorings where we can spend the night. We're in the dark. We started in the dark, we ended in the dark. This is possibly the longest we've cruised. At six o'clock, we started at seven. That's 11 hours. Yeah, we went from sunrise to sundown. We have traveled onto the Huddersfield Narrows. We actually went all the way across the Ash. Ashton Canal. Ashton Canal. Um, and we started on the Rochdale. And we started on the Rochdale. And if we'd been one lock lower down, we'd we have started, started on, on the, the bridge on water. Bridgewater. So we've done three um, Waterway. distinct waterways. We don't know how many locks. I think it might be 30, but we were aiming for 26. And then we did one, two, three, four more. Yeah, so it's 30 locks today. Mm. First, we did the Rochdale 9. And Mike from Twitter came to help us, which was a lovely surprise he did offer yeah. on twitter and i was like yeah we'll be there at seven like as a joke i didn't think he was serious and then he turned yeah. up <laughs> so we were so happy to see him thank yeah. you and we actually could have stopped like more at the top of the watch Nine. there was quite a lot, a lot of uh, mooring opportunities and it quite, looked quite okay yeah it would have been fine but that would have been far too short of a travel no but i mean if we'd gone up yesterday yes we continued up the first of the um I can't remember the name of the flight, but the, the first of the Ashton Canal box. They were bitchy. Um, and so two onwards were okay, except for their narrow locks that... They were all really deep. Like, they were all deep, deep locks. Very deep. The bottom gates would not stay closed. They all had the anti-vandal lock on them, but about... Yeah, I'd some say of a the... third of them, the anti-vandal mechanism was messed up in yeah. some way. Like some were just held on, some were like wedged on. <laughs> no, were, none were actually functioning properly. Yeah. <laughs> they were either not on properly but looked on or broken on. Yeah. And I mean, these locks have been refurbished. And, and in fact, this whole area has been refurbished because the Ash Canal had quite a reputation for being like unpleasant. Yeah. And it's, it's not, not. Yeah. I mean, there's one stretch. I think... If we'd just done 18 locks in a day and not 30, we wouldn't have, like the bitchiness of the locks wouldn't have bothered us so much. They were tough locks. Yeah. It was hard to move the me mechanisms. 
the locks did not fill particularly quickly. Some of them were hydraulic and some of the times the hydraulics had just failed. So yeah. considering how apprehensive we were about after what we read last night, there was, there was there was no trouble. Yeah, no, I mean, it's... There was that one like long pound that was really shallow and that was felt a bit sketchy around there. It was very long. It was very shallow. It had obviously been draining quite a bit. Um, and yeah, it was the sketchiest. There was a few people hanging around and... Like they were friendly. They were chatting about the coal, but they were friendly. They were shooting heroin, but they were friendly. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. Uh, you may as well be realistic <laughs> about it. There was there was a couple of couple of groups of people who were who were definitely on the down and outs. Yeah, so we were wondering whether we should say like that that's what happened because we don't want to put people off coming on the, this canal because, like for me, it was quite shocking to see. But it shouldn't be like that stuff goes on, and they're just people that. Have, having they issues basically have a health concern yeah and they were fine with us i mean it was a bit crap that they put their needles on the ground but yeah i mean for the most part that was that mainly was... like the plastic covers and stuff yeah um i walked along there with george and i was really careful looking at the ground going like well i don't actually see any like needles but there is a lot of paraphernalia but there were some needles on the rochdale nine mm -hmm. under the bridge yeah and there was lots of broken glass along there at one stage i had to pick george up and carry him, carry him. we should yeah. check his paws tonight though we will. Yeah. Then Other we, than that one stretch, though, I'd say... The rest of it is fine. And then we got to the top, and it was, um, it was like 3 o'clock, and the schools were finishing. And so we got held up at that top lock, because it was like... Oh, yeah, whole this, families wanted this, to know. The bridges across the lock is like their route home. It's like, <laughs> it was like a constant audience, and then Michael got chatting. And, yeah. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, they were really friendly. And we could have moored there, but... Um, I thought we were, like, the whole day I was like, I just need to get to 18, I just need to get to 18. And Michael was like, I'm so tired, I've got a headache, I don't, you know, I just need to get to the top. And then he pipes up at about lock 16. Should we carry on? And do well, it's because the whole stretch from there to the Huddersfield Narrows, there is no uh, locks. Yeah. So my thought was, once we made it through all these locks, if we just continue to the next lock, and we sort of moor up below the next lock, then at least we've cut three miles off of our journey yeah um and four more locks it turns out <laughs> yeah and then we get to the bottom of those locks and at the bottom lock there's basically nowhere to moor up and then we got, we got into well you dropped me off just before it and that we had something on the prop so with him going up that lock michael had to put his hands in the canal yeah and pull out this like, like sweatshirt sweatshirt that was wrapped around the prop and my hand froze <gasps> <sighs> and and that slowed us down for a bit, which is why we ended up in the dark here. Yeah. We, we really, really is dark. We yeah. should have arrived and gone up one more lock. Yeah, there's the visitor moorings here, which is what we were, were aiming for. But I think there's visitor moorings like from this lock for about four more locks. Yeah, and it these... says between lock four and eight, there's various places where there's moorings available. And this village up here, which I've forgotten the name of, Slay Stable Stale Bridge. Stale. Staley Bridge. Uh, Staley Bridge? Is that how you pronounce it? Staley Bridge. Staley Bridge. Okay. It's probably pronounced Foosh. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's, it's it. extremely uh, well reviewed in our 10 year old Nicholson's guide. As, so does that mean we need to go and have a look around? Well, we'll take a look as we go through. Because okay. it, this is all the recent canal rebuilt. Like you saw that last lock, it's like a very brand new lock. Uh -huh. um, the first one wasn't, that was a stone lock, yeah. but, but the rest of this was, was restored not too long ago. And it was a big project for, for the area. <laughs> the other reason we carried on is because we had like fine weather and it is forecast rain. So we kind of thought, let's let's make hay while the sun shines. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, we're shattered and hungry and tired and cold and tired else? and cold and hungry. I need the bathroom. <laughs> yes, bathroom is needed. Food is required. <laughs> Shower is definitely required. At least we've got a lot of hot water. Yeah. So. So. From dark to dark, from dusk till dawn, no, the other way around, from dawn till dusk, we are the vampire boaters of the Northern Canals. Possibly our longest ever cruise, we think, maybe. Yeah. 11 hours. Yeah. Long day. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, if you can see the thumbs up. There mm -hmm. it is. The ghostly thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Hit the subscribe button if you want to get more of this and hit notifications bell thingamadoodle if you want to actually hear from us nope i don't know i sort of flubbed all that but i don't care I see, too, i'm too tired too, too tired I, we gotta I get the dog inside also, he's, he's falling asleep over there he has he's curled up fingers crossed that i didn't leave the paddles open on that pound no, we haven't drained anymore so I'm, I too, think we're fine. I'm too tired to go and have a look right
just as the flashing lights and a siren goes past. Let's go. That way. <laughs> Why am I in such a good mood? I don't know. You're recording? Yes. <laughs> recording, recording. We are in the dark. We are we're in the dark. We are in the dark. We ended in the dark. We started Shush. in the dark. Arsehole. Start we again. <laughs>